fascination. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Lord God, we understand that the time is yours, Lord. May we be better stewards of your time, Lord. And may your words and your scriptures jump out of the screen, Lord, and convict us all to do better, all of us, including me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, to disregard the light is to reject it. Are your emotions controlling you? Are you comfortable falling behind? Are you self-sabotaging yourself? Let's find out why. How and why are habits formed? <clears throat> Basically, a habit is a repetition of an act, doing it over and over and over again. Repetition makes habits. On average, it takes two months before a new behavior becomes automatic. Yeah, to be exactly, it's 66 days. So the good news is you can implement new behaviors in your life and make those good behaviors now are good habits. So you don't have to be chained to a bad habit or a bad behavior. So we can develop new behaviors that are good and good habits. How? Repetition. Are you more logically or emotionally driven? Does everyone in the audience know? Are they more logical or more emotional? Everyone well, that everyone that thinks they're more emotional, if you could raise your hand. Women, sadly. Women, this is true. <laughs> uh, those that think they're more logical. <laughs> big, big surprise. Uh, so if you're logic driven, how often do you cry? Cry. Cry. If you're logic, okay? How often do you cry? Semi annually? Annually? Never? Do you use words like the facts are? Relies. So people that are logic driven, and again, it's not always, nothing is 100% all the time, but they rely more on facts, evidence, analysis uh, to arrive to conclusions. If you're more emotionally driven, how often do you cry? And we have more people in the room lift their hands about being emotionally driven. Every day? Weekly? Monthly? I see some people shaking their heads. <laughs> Pretty much. Do you use words like, feels like? Emotional thinking is subjective and driven by feelings, emotions, and intuition. How many times did Jesus cry in the Bible? At least once. Once? Jesus once? Was in Jerusalem. Okay, that's one. That's twice. With Lazarus. Lazarus, Lazarus, yes. Too, yeah. Okay. He was crying on the cross. I mean, okay. Very good. So there were actually three times in Scripture that Jesus wept. His friend uh, Lazarus died, uh, John eleven thirty five, when entering Jerusalem because he was seeing that it was going to be destroyed, and he also cried on the cross. So yeah. very good, but not every day. Not every month. <laughs> okay. I didn't forget. I just didn't think about it. Has anybody ever heard this excuse? Logic versus emotions. Logic solicits uh, cognitive effort, which is your frontal lobe, whereas emotion is automatic. You've got your amygdala gland, which is your fight or flight and uh, disperses adrenaline. And then people that are constantly emotional in that fight or flight they have found that the amygdala gland actually grows. Mm. Just like in any other thing, the more you use it, I mean, if it's a muscle, obviously it's a gland, it's not a muscle, but it's going to grow from overuse. Mm. Emotion thinking tends to be quicker, knee-jerk responses, anger, hurt, not always well thought out. Okay? Mm. Thinking logically through your emotions, slow down, take a time out count. Pause and breathe. Recognize that you what, what you feel is a response to your own thoughts about what is happening to you or around you. 
You're reacting to it. Remove yourself from the situation. Avoid child logic. Respond logically. The change from earth to heaven will not change men's character. The happiness of the redeemed in heaven results from the character formed in this life after the image of Christ. Amen. The saints in heaven will first have been saints on earth. Amen. So our behavior here on earth, here, now, today, this moment, tomorrow, and after is important. It's crucial to our development. It's crucial to our preparation for heaven. Amen. The last minute syndrome. The last minute syndrome is a complex behavioral pattern rooted in various psychological factors from the allure of instant gratification to fear of failure and perfectionism. There are several underlying causes that contribute to this tendency. Is this a good tendency? Waiting till the last minute to get something done? He that overseeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. James, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So basically over here on the left, we have, you know, if you kind of float around and don't get your work done the way you're supposed to, you shall not reap. But over here is the promise. Make an effort. Ask God for help. But make an effort. The verse is a warning against procrastination. Just because we don't have the complete picture is no excuse for inactivity. Solomon advises us to get moving because the good things God has to offer will not come to those who waver. Amen. What's the main cause of procrastination? Anybody? Lack of organizational skills. Okay, that's a small part of it, but that's not it. Procrastination is caused by the same things that it creates stress and anxiety so it's just a terrible hamster wheel going around and around so stress and anxiety is causing you to procrastinate and then procrastination is causing stress and anxiety so it is a terrible cycle that you have to break with knowledge and that's what we're going to walk out of here with today yes i just wanted to say that that is 100 percent true um, I'm so glad that I'm in here because that is exactly what happens to me every single week. And there's so much for so many different things, like so many different responsibilities in my life. And I literally am so overwhelmed by it that I'm like, nope, just can't do it. And then I put it off and then guess what? There's not enough time to get it all done. So yes, I'm a living testimony that that is true and it is torture. Okay. God's going to help you today. Amen. We avoid tasks because they overwhelm us in the moment. This feels good momentarily. So we get a little relief. Oh, I have to do that. It's going to be painful. I'm overwhelmed. If I don't do it, I'll do it later. Now I get a moment of relief. But what we don't realize is that it's stacking it up and the cycle is going to continue even worse because the mountain is growing even larger. We get to do something we want instead and don't need to address any obligations. And I've seen this. I don't have time to do that, but I've got time to do something I really want to do. But it's because the Lord really wants me to do this other thing that I want to do. <laughs> we believe that doing tasks will, over, will somehow be easier in the future, which is absolutely not true. Everyone procrastinates a little, but some personality types are more likely to put stuff off. If you're impulsive, disorganized, or consider yourself a perfectionist, you're more apt to be a procrastinator. The brain of procrastinators have a larger amygdala. We were talking about that early, earlier. Delivers emotional responses. So obviously you're going to have a heightened 
uh, stress level, heightened anxiety, okay? Maybe something that might not overwhelm person A overwhelms you because you have a heightened amygdala that's going to respond. It's kind of like if I grab my hand here, it doesn't hurt. But if the hand is injured or has something, and now I do the same thing, now I'm going to respond. And we just have to become aware of what triggers us and, and understand and just settle our emotions down. Okay? Through God, through prayer, we have the ability to do all of these things and through knowledge. And astral um, Okay, so uh, limbic system known for fight or flight. What's happening is called the amygdala hijack. Okay? And we used to train people to testify in court. Okay, we used to charge five thousand dollars a day mm. to train somebody to testify in court, mm. and it has nothing to do with your IQ. Okay, we we were teaching doctors, lawyers to testify in court, five thousand dollars a day, so that their amygdala, when they get asked that question that causes stress to them, that they don't blurt out and or that they don't just get crushed by the question and I, I saw it I saw it happen once and uh, the the gentleman was an anesthesiologist and uh, it, it was a and he wasn't the surgeon he was the anesthesiologist he didn't do the surgery and the the person that had the surgery done ended up in a wheelchair and they asked the anesthesiologist do you think the results were good? And his, he got his amygdala hijacked and he said, what do you mean? And, and just started blurting out and got out of control exactly what uh, the plaintiff's attorney wanted him to do, out of control. So that's an amygdala hijack. But the procrastinators are reacting emotionally and the emotion focused coping response is to escape. Okay, fight or flight. And, and if it's truly an urgent matter, you're being cha chased uh, uh, by a lion or a car is about to hit you, that's a time to fight or flight. But not when you're having a conversation or you were offended or something like this is not the right time. Fight or flight found in PTSD, overwhelming emotions, depression, anxiety, stress. Proverbs 13.4. The soul of the slugger desireth and have nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. It's a good time to be fat. <laughs> and, and the Lord tells us what it takes to become fat in the Lord, to be diligent. Don't confuse movement with progress. You can run in place and not get anything done. Amen. Are you moving forward or are you running in the same place? Do you have a plan? Are you planning ahead? Are you putting forth your best effort? Let all things be done decently and in order. If you're thinking about finishing this meeting later, we urge you to reconsider. We're gonna finish it today. <laughs> The habit of putting off tasks, often until it's too late, is called procrastination. And the reason I'm doing that over and over, because it's called and no repetition. So we're learning repetition. While not inherently bad, procrastination often makes us deny our own judgment and neglect our future selves. We know we'd be better off working toward our goals and making tomorrow easier, but avoid those tasks anyway. Putting off tasks can also negatively affect your well-being. The stress of not addressing obligations and letting items pile up can cause anxiety and procrastination is just that, putting off today's work for tomorrow. We gain mom, 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 momentary, momentary relief when we do this, but the cost is making our future lives busier and more stressful. So the now is better than the later or tomorrow. John 9, 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Amen. 
The Bible gives no endorsement to idleness. It is the greatest curse that afflicts our world. Every man and woman who is truly converted will be a diligent worker. Christ's object lessons. Wow. Here are a few more reasons for procrastination. Confidence issues. Check whether you, you've set unrealistic expectations for yourself or simply need assurance from a close friend. Perfectionism. While perfectionism can fuel productivity, it can also derail a project altogether. Sometimes it's better to submit good work on time than great work late or not at all. The perfect is the enemy of the good. You know, you've got your project, it's finished. Oh no, I can do better. Now you start over. Now your project, it's late. Now you're more stressed out. Now you got another project that this one just messed up. Oh, well, that's what I do. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> Fear of failing. You might avoid doing certain tasks because you're afraid you'll fail. This could be fueled by confidence issues or perfectionism. Lack of motivation. If you're uninspired by a project, you're less likely to complete it. Reevaluate your goals to find motivators that work for you and make lifestyle changes where necessary. Everything I'm sharing, you can do. Everything. Mental health conditions, procrastination, and psychological well-being are intrinsically linked. Those who suffer from ADHD, anxiety, depression are more likely to avoid overwhelming tasks. <clears throat> what types of procrastinators are there? Good ones and bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Uninformed and informed. <laughs> okay. We, we, we've got the dreamers. Okay. The perfectionist. The, the warrior. The overdoer. The mixed. They, they're not satisfied with just one. They, they want several. <laughs> the, and then the defier. Yes, go ahead. Warrior. Warrior. They, they worry. worry. They have anxiety and the. Oh, war, not, not warrior. Warrior. Yeah. Warrior. Yeah. Warrior. It's not an A. The dreamer. I can relate to that. I, I, I see myself accomplishing all these great grand things. This week I'm going to go to the gym every day. I'm going to be working out and every day is passing. I'm not going to the gym. I see myself going to the well, gym. But, but seeing it, seeing it is a good first step. Oh now you got to pencil <laughs> the time and pencil the time, put together a plan. They call them business plans. Show what you're going to do? What days are you going to do it? And my advice to you is, don't make it too difficult. Don't say I'm going to go four days every week for six months. Say you know what? Uh, I'm going to go uh, two days a week. And, and accomplish that right. and then once you get that under you if you want to add another day do it but set goals that you can reach okay. yeah. smart goals, smart goals uh, short goals that you you can and we're going to talk about that I love this slide <laughs> sometimes it's not the devil it's a decision <laughs> How many how many times do we, do we give this evil one so much credit? Right? Yeah. Yeah. It gets too much credit. Yes, yes. So ask God for wisdom and discernment. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. James. So God gives wisdom away without reproach or even finding fault. In other words, he doesn't look at all of your previous foolish choices and decide we are not worthy of receiving wisdom from him Amen. without reproach. So ask. Yes. About the perfectionist, well, I mean, we all want to do so much good for the Lord and please the Lord. And uh, many times you fail and you feel miserable, but there is a verse that helps me all the time. It is 
He who makes me perfect in every good work to do His will, working in me that which is well pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ. So, uh, my point is, having connection with the Lord will help you to avoid the perfectionist uh, in a way where the devil will uh, put the thoughts into your mind. Still, you want to please the Lord, you fail. Mm -hmm. You're perfect. Mm -hmm. Be you perfect as I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. So to find the balance, it's not easy. It comes, like you said, with the prayer and the Holy Spirit, having the Holy Spirit. And then we'll have this beautiful outcome. So we don't have to blame ourselves because otherwise we tell, tell the Lord, you know what? I'm doing it my own. Mm -hmm. On my own. No. Christ is the answer. Thank you. But also keep in mind that you don't have to be perfect for the Lord to use you. Okay, David was a murderer, and there's plenty of examples in the Bible of imperfect people that the Lord used for great glory. So you don't have to be perfect. Yes, Dan. Oh, so the demoniac, Jesus healed him. He wanted to go with Jesus. It's a good thing to do, right? Jesus says no. You need to stay here. He didn't say, no, you need to go get a degree from Andrews or you need to go get a bachelor's degree or go to college or finish high school. He didn't say any of those things. He just said, tell the people what the Lord has done for you. The demoniac didn't have any, any capabilities at all. There's one more story. There was a mission trip, I think it was a share him, but anyway, this girl went along to help with the computers. She had no idea about the God, about God, about the Bible. She didn't know Moses, she didn't know Paul, she didn't know Abraham, she didn't know anything, right? So they were short of presenters and someone asked her, can you present? Well, it was a script and it was all there, but she had no qualifications nothing at the end of the series she baptized people that had listened to her and she was baptized herself Amen. so god can use anyone and it's not qualifications he's looking for he calls he doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the call Amen. but again be careful in wanting to be perfect and say god is making me perfect and as soon as he does then I'll do this for him. We don't Doesn't have to be perfect. Way. In yeah. fact, I would say, and as Dan, as you so well said, it may even work against you. Mm. But we have to lead towards perfection. Absolutely. That's the call. Dealing with procrastination. It's challenging to understand why we put off tasks and how to motiv motivate ourselves to change stubborn habits. But facing difficult obligations head-on is the first step to beating our, our chronic procrastination. Start by addressing procrastination itself. Understand procrastination's emotional roots. Telling yourself you're lazy and unmotivated won't give you the confidence necessary to take on scary tasks. Remember, procrastination doesn't say something about you. It says something about your emotions. It's not about being lazy. Spot your patterns. You can only solve a problem you understand. And that's what we're here, to understand. Jot down tasks you tend to avoid and avoidance tactics you prefer. Self-diagnose. Use this information to address behavior patterns and limit distractions. For example, you might neglect household chores related uh, tasks most Distracting yourself with YouTube, TV, addressing this by setting specific hours each day for items like food prep and cleaning and putting a blanket over the TV as a reminder not to turn it on. <laughs> find your triggers. And it's amazing. Procrastinators still find time for what they really want to do. Limit distractions. Distractions are the easiest way to procrastinate. Sometimes we don't even realize we're distracting ourselves to avoid work until we see our screen uh, time metrics or 
you get on the phone with people, right? Oh, but they need to talk to me, or I, I just want to say hi to them before I get started on my task. Mm-hmm. And now you've, you've been on the phone for 30 oh, minutes, or you've talked to three different people, and it sure was fun, and it distracted you, but now you're behind on your project. Wow. <laughs> Sweep, sweeping or vacuuming the floor is useful, but not if you're doing it to avoid sending a time-sensitive work email. Prioritize. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get more into that, but creating lists and time. I call it productive procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> is there is such a thing. Okay. <laughs> Reframe anxiety. Anxiety and excitement are similar sensations in the body. They both can cause increased heart rate, sweaty palms, or racing thoughts. The next time you feel stressed and anxious about completing an important task, reframe these feelings as excitement for working towards an interesting project or achieving our goals. So let's talk about that a little bit. So we're reframing. Okay, we have anxiety, but we're, we're, we're saying that anxiety is actually excitement. And because it, I always like to say that task is so important that I'm excited about it. And you do better work when you're excited about it. It's important, so we're excited. We're not anxious. We're not stressed. We're ex- excited about it. And, I, we're, and I'm excited about finishing it. Because it doesn't matter. You can spend all this time, again, running in place, doing research. But if you're not putting anything down on paper, you're not moving your project forward, then you're procrastinating. Then you're a really good procrastinator. And whatever you do, work heartily as the Lord, as for the Lord and not for men. Does it say certain things when you do certain things? No. What does it say? Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Does it say it's okay not to be diligent with some things and, and diligent with other things? No. Dealing with procrastination. Forgive yourself. Procrastination is often a vicious mental cycle. You postpone items and miss uh, a deadline, then you make yourself feel so bad about it that you feel incapable of ever accomplishing your goals. It's terrible. The best way to get back on track is to practice self-compassion. Forgive yourself when you neglect work so you have the necessary self-esteem to face the next task. Rest if you need it, and come back fresher tomorrow. But don't do the same thing tomorrow as you just did today. Least favorite. Sometimes we keep ourselves busy to avoid doing our least favorite tasks. Try doing your most unpleasant tasks first each day. Checking what you dread off your list, your to-do list in the morning means your day can only get better. And this is such a natural thing, things for us to do. What we don't want to do, we want to put at the bottom of the list rather than at the top. And I tell you, I force myself to put it at the top, and it does make you feel good. Now I'm relieved. I got that done. I can go ahead and focus on things that I'm happy to be doing. But check your list and prioritize. Yes? You know, that's such an interesting thought that you're on because I hate doing the kitchen and here trying to do your own recipes and just have like every dish dirty and I would wait like right before I went to bed to clean the kitchen but even in the spirit of inspiration it says clean the kitchen first (laughs) so right after you eat you're supposed to clean the kitchen and I found that when I did it that way and you know, a couple of days went by and I was tempted to go ahead and say, save it again to nighttime, but I didn't. And I was feeling so, like it was just a big old monkey off your back. Mm-hmm. So I was like, right? yeah, because you are, you got that kitchen on your mind all day long. Yes. You're dreading going in there and cleaning it up. And you did good. Yeah. It feels good. <laughs> it feels good to do good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now, it was stressing you out, kind of like a, a pin just poking you, mm-hmm. and you got it done, and now you're going to do be better at the other task because yeah. you're not stressed over that one task. 
plan your days in advance rather than frantically figuring out what you'll do on any given day. A better way to approach your day would be to take a few minutes at the end of each day to quickly map out the following day. Absolutely. Excuse me? Planning is the Absolutely. It's one of the answers, yes. There, it's actually, there are several steps, but yeah, planning is one of the answers. But again, you got to follow through on your plan, right? It's not just a plan and you're done. I had a plan. I just didn't follow through. Does it planning sometimes cause a sense of anxiety when it's not completed? Because I started doing that <laughs> last year. I, I was doing the planning thing. I had my calendar and all, all everything. And what I found is that at the end of the day, I write down about like eight items. And then at the end of the evening, I only had like five done. And then I'll get very frustrated <laughs> over the fact that I didn't get all eight accomplished. And so I started feeling a lot of anxiety because I felt like every day I had three on and I had if, like eight more and then like 13 items. and. I, how could I get all that done? Well, we were talking about you going to the gym. You need to lower the expectation a little bit, not be a perfectionist, and start out with a smaller list. And get that, and now you're building momentum. And now you feel good about it. It's like you complete, you did it. And now you go, I've got confidence to do that tomorrow. And down the line, you may want to add an extra thing, but maybe you only add four things, not eight or nine to your list. Yeah. until you get momentum and confidence okay. okay make a plan create smaller steps smaller steps and then set a timer therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin yes okay so um in my situation <clears throat> a lot of the time um i will set specific time that i'm supposed to be doing something and then say, um, especially with the church work, communication is a large part of what I do. And so I sit down to put the information together and lo and behold, wait a minute, this, I need information from this person or I need information from this person. And so what, what I thought and what I allocated, say four hours for, winds up being six hours. What do I do in that case? bump things till tomorrow and then that's procrastinating and then it starts piling up on me and then I'm so overwhelmed that I'm just like oh I'm never going to get all this done okay great question thank you uh so again same similar answer set realistic goals you know that if you're calling people you're not going to get all of them to answer uh when you first call them not all of them are going to be responsive uh to you and so you know this task is probably going to take not one day but maybe two two days. So realistic uh, uh, expectations. And also, just to add, as a mother, I don't work there with buzzers going off every few minutes because she's a buzzer every few minutes. So time blocks for me. So I'll do this in this block of time. And if I don't get that done in this block of time, then I'll roll it on to like the next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or the next day or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just do better with blocks of time. I've got this and this and this I want to get done. Instead of, yeah. like is it going on? No, no, and, and blocks of times is, is perfect. Now, when you want to set a buzzard is if you're cooking downstairs <laughs> and, and you're going to go upstairs for an hour and you've melted two pots already, uh, so you probably want to use a buzzard on something like that. But yeah. but time, 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 for you to start a time, I got a bottle. Time, time, <laughs> time lines. I have pots burned. <laughs> oh, me too. They're still outside. They can just <laughs> well, and, and praise God, it was only the pot and not the house. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. So how can we do better? And we've already covered a lot. You guys have come up with some great suggestions already, but anything can become a habit. Mm -hmm. What is a word for someone who doesn't procrastinate? Diligent. Diligent. Individual uh, is someone who doesn't put things off. Do's and don'ts of avoiding procrastination and getting more done. Set clear goals and priorities. 
Who's taking notes today? Good, excellent. That's what you gave us a book, right? Yes. I missed all the types of procrastination there was. And I'm interested to know, is there a test? Because it seems like I... There, there, there are, there are tests. Like yeah. Are we taking a test today? No. Okay. Uh, but, but you can actually mingle different types. Okay, okay. That's what it's like. And it's not good to mingle, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, break tasks into smaller steps. Create and follow a daily routine. Limit distractions in your work environment. Experiment with time management techniques. Hold yourself accountable for your progress. Uh, John 9, 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man work again. Amen. And, and the staying up till midnight or 1 o'clock at night because you didn't get done what you needed to get. That's not a good solution. No. But you can if you have if you're motivated and you're gonna go things, you can stay till two or three o'clock in the morning but you finish everything. No. no. And I will tell you why. Because what's the right, you know, you're, no, you're but gonna... I'm retired, so I'd sleep the next day. Yeah, but yeah, the melatonin and, and God God gave us a certain cycle, right? That's so right. you're better off going to bed at nine or ten by two a.m. is but where sometimes you're deep. You, you, you've got things that needs to be done. Well, the, the sometimes it's okay. Just don't make a habit of no, it. No, no, it's okay. not a habit. It's just like sometimes. Well, um, not according to the health reform. It's not sometimes. It's never. <laughs> no. Even never. I. It's, never. it's a proven fact. Yeah, but if, you're, if you, your mind is going, 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 and you're like, so I sit here and think about it, or sit, or just go do it. No, you just stop thinking about. <laughs> Even one day cannot return to you the um, damage that you do to DNA, to your brain, oh. to cells, because there is a reparation going on, a replication going on, cleansing, uh, getting uh, toxins out, yes. and uh, refreshing your brain, repairing your brain yes. actually. So uh, when I have presentations and uh, like I, I, I don't do this much at all right now but when i know that there is no time for me and i use something that i want to put it there and i say next morning I, i'm not refreshed and it is not right i just know i myself teach and i have to leave out what i preach so i'm stopping doing it right and um, i'm trying to get all done and if i cannot I didn't finish, I go to sleep at 7, at 8, wake up at 4, and that's where you do your best. Yeah, and, and remember, we, we talked about making bad habits and also making good habits. And if you start doing that enough, you're creating bad habits. All of a sudden, you can't sleep, and this becomes your... that's been your, me all my life, though. Well, well, just, no, no, what I mean is, like, if I have something to do and I need to get it done and I didn't have enough time during the day, you didn't have enough, you're retired and you didn't have enough time during the day? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you should go there. Okay. okay. No, but uh, it, truly, the best way is to keep the law of sleep, the law of rest, right? Because the law is not for suggestion, it's well, for the choice and reason and order. Yeah. So it's our choice to make you healthy. And you will get another habit because we've given intellect to train ourselves, not follow the bad habit, but like Carla said, the diligence request of the Bible request diligence in everything we do. Absolutely. Amen. And I am guilty myself. But That's why I'm in this class to see why. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think we're all guilty at one time or another, staying up yeah. late trying to get stuff done. Yeah. So, but we all agree that that's not the best method. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, make a, don't make a habit of it. That's what right. Saying. If you do not schedule your time, your default will be to waste it. Mm. Your work right. will expand to fill the time allotted to its completion. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're saying, I've got the morning, all morning to write this email, guess what? Mm. Probably by the end of the morning, if you're fortunate, you're going to get that email off. Now, if you had blocked off a time between 8 or 9, I want to send that email, you'll yeah. get it done between 8 or 9. But now, you said, I've got all this time, and believe me, you're going to use all that time because <laughs> you think you have it. But you've used up all that time that you could have done some other projects as well. Yeah. 
that now you're doing tomorrow. That's certainly true. Remember, when you finish the final that final paper in one night before the deadline, I don't recommend this. However, start early, finish early. If you do not schedule your time, your default is to waste it. Will your task take less? If your task takes less than two minutes, complete it now, right away. Can I get commitments from everyone on this? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. yes. yes. Can I get that in writing? Please? <laughs> <laughs> Text is good. <laughs> Much thought, right? You didn't have time. I have time. <laughs> time flies. But now you convince me so because of Christ calls us soldiers for a reason. And soldiers have discipline and order. And Christ is our God. He's a God. He's our God and He loves order. Yeah. Remember how in the tomb they found this napkin that covered his face and it was Make all this so neatly, right? Everything makes sense. So, yeah. Good, good. Amen. 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 It's God's time. We have to be good stewards of it. Yes. Yeah, I don't think that people realize, like, um, you know, we read the Bible, read the Bible, and Jesus Christ is coming back soon, et cetera. And, and one of the things that I've had to, like, really, for me, it hasn't been hard because I'm definitely not progressing. In fact, I'll do, you know, triple the work in the same amount of times. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you literally how how I create an unnecessary anxiety in myself. Mm. But I don't think that people do realize the phrase a sense of urgency. Like when you work, you really need to work with a sense of urgency in anything yeah. you do to be excellent, right? Because we are to be excellent. Mm -hmm. But especially when you're working in God's work, mm -hmm. time <laughs> you know is, is very limited. You know, uh, as I'm thinking about this evangelism series, you know. Right now, due to unforeseen circumstances, we're starting really late in the promoting of this. So, like, we need to work quickly. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah and, so, I, so I relate to what you're saying. Yeah, and, and again, there's just so many distractions, and most of them are self-inflicted, self-inflicted distractions. And, and don't forget that this video will be on the YouTube channel, yeah. so you can go and watch it again. Uh, but uh, procrastination is not necessarily uh, laziness at all. No, I said it, it's not laziness. It's uh, yes, and uh, making our own priorities maybe at yes. the time we do things. Well, not only wrong, uh, bad planning, but wrong execution, or no execution, or poor execution, or minimal execution. Yeah. Uh, this ha so the two-minute rule could be five minutes, two minutes. Do it right away has uh, two benefits. This prevents small tasks from piling up and overwhelming you, and uh, quick wins add up to success. Okay, you're getting this off, checking these off your list. Mm -hmm. So what can you do? Give yourself a week to complete a two-hour task, and it takes a week. Again, do not put off. Start early, finish early. What did we learn? Procrastination is a form of temporary stress release. However, it's creating more stress. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's a habit, and because it's a habit, it can be changed. What triggers you? What creates stress? Your pattern. What's your pattern to avoid? Reward. Stress relief. Acknowledge the stress. Interrupt the stress. Count five, four, three, two, one. Interrupt the habit that is stored in you, in your mind. Remember, you're emotional. Your amygdala is being hijacked. <laughs> now awaken your frontal cortex, the logic. It's not going to hurt you. If I do this task, it's not going to hurt. I'm excited. It's not stress. It's excitement. Work for five minutes. Your problem isn't working. It's avoidance. Just by starting, research shows 80% will keep going. So if you start the task, 80% of people will keep going. Just by starting. It's the fact the people that run away to go do whatever they really want to do. Repetition makes habits. There are good habits and bad habits. There's good repetition and bad repetition. On average, it takes more than two months, and again, repetition, 
two months before a new behavior becomes automatic, 66 days to be exact. Do what you hate to do, however, do it like you love it. <laughs> But let's say that one again with emphasis. Do, it. do what you hate to do, however, do it like you love it. That's a challenge. You know, I, you can clean in the kitchen, you can put your favorite YouTube personality on. <laughs> you know, songs or whatever, you know, so you're not in there by yourself. You know, you feel like, Oh, you, you weren't here for my multitasking one, but that's okay. No, it's good. It's good to have fun. Make it fun. Absolutely. Uh, change the stress into excitement. Excited to get started and to finish. Oh. Our time belongs to God. Every mo moment is His, and we are under the most solemn obligation to improve it to His glory. Of no talent He has given will He require a more strict accounting than that of our time. Amen. Amen.